Howdy folks! Today's video is my June reading wrap up and also I'm gonna talk about some of the books I read in May because I didn't do a wrap up for that month. Also sorry about the flute, that's um unavoidable. In May the first book I read was The Scythe, I'd, I always say the, there's no the, whatever, but it's The Scythe, <laughs> I'm gonna say that again, by Neil Schusterman. Um, this is a sci-fi kind of dystopian book where they've conquered death, like they've conquered any sicknesses and illnesses and starvation and everything so nobody dies and sides are there to kill people so that the world doesn't get too overpopulized. Whatever, I can't talk. So this is about two people, Citra and Rowan, who get recruited and are training to become sides and then of course a whole bunch of stuff happens and it's crazy. And this book was actually amazing. I loved it and it was so much more than I was expecting it to be, which was a pleasant surprise, obviously, because I loved it. Um, and the ending, the ending was amazing, actually amazing. So I gave this book 4.75 and almost five stars because it was really good, but I'm not sure if I want to give it a five star, but it's been like a month. So it's probably a 4.75. But this was a really good book, so definitely read that. The next book I read is actually up here. I don't know if you can see it. The next book I read is Caress by Marissa Meyer. This is the third book in the Lunar Chronicle series, and it's also sci-fi. It's like, it's young adult. These are both young adult. Like everything I've read, basically. I'll say if it's not young adult, but most likely it's young adult. So this is huge. So I listened to it partially on audiobook and read the rest but this is a really good series i love it it's um fairy tale retelling so this is rapunzel i was gonna say tangled it's not tangled it's rapunzel so this was fun i can't really say much about what it was about i can't talk today because it's the third book but um in the first book which is cinder that is cinderella obviously and she's a cyborg and she falls in love with the prince, but cyborgs are looked down upon, and the lunar queen is evil, and she's trying to take over, and all that stuff. The second book is Scarlet, which is Little Red Riding Hood, and by, like, halfway through, they meet up, so in this one, it actually happens a lot faster, I think. It's, like, a quarter of the way through, all three of them meet up, and a whole lot of stuff go goes down, and it's crazy and, like, really long, and the romance is fun. It wasn't my favorite romance ever, but it's more of a side plot, so, well, kind of. But yeah, it was really good. I gave this one 3.5 stars because it wasn't my absolute favorite thing ever, but it was very enjoyable and I had a good time. The next book, I actually soft DNF'd it, so not actually DNF'd. Ruthless Vows by Rebecca Ross. I knew I was not in the mood for it and I didn't want to uh, ruin the experience of reading it because I read it in a bad time. So I soft enough that. And then I picked up Finale, which is also right here. This is the third book in the Carval series by Stephanie Garber. This is like my all-time favorite fantasy world. And this wasn't my favorite of the three books, but it was really good. I really enjoyed it. The romance was very good. There's two different romances because there's Scarlet and Donatella, the sisters. And this toggles between both their perspectives and I think somebody else's. I could be wrong. I don't really remember. But this was very good. I love this world. It's so mystical, fantasy, magical, wonderful. Also, I'd say for these, these are really good books for people who don't read fantasy much and want to get into fantasy because they're not too much on the fantasy side. They're just like magical and fun. So the Carval, the first book is about this magical game where you don't know truth from lies and you have to win to earn a prize. This book is does not take place in the games, but it's with all the same people. And they're, they're facing a whole different trial. And Jax is in this, if you know who that is. He's amazing. And there's like a love triangle going on with some people. And um, they're dealing with the fates and the cards and them being trapped. That's all I'll say about that. Because I don't want to spoil it and I don't, I never know what spoilers. So this one I gave a 4.5, but I feel like it might be a 4.25 because I don't know. I don't think it was that good, 
but like it was really good and I love it because I love the characters so it was really good and there were some things I was underlining because like they were just so good so yeah that one was very good and that is all the books I read in May, but now I'm talking about audiobooks. The first is Castles in Their Bones by Laura Sebastian. This is a fantasy with kings and queens and politics, and I don't really know what else, <laughs> but it was really good. It was a little questionable at certain points. I don't know. It was not my favorite thing ever, but the ending really got fast and got me wanting to read the next book. That one was really good. I give that a three star because it's not my absolute favorite thing ever, but it was really good. Next, I listened to The Fury by Alex Michalide. I don't know how to say his last name, but it's The Fury. This is a thriller mystery and it's adult. So there's heavier topic, more thrillery probably. This was fun. It was a little confusing and a little strange at some points, but for the most part, it was a really good mystery, and I give this one three stars as well. I, d I could not tell you what it's about. I'm sorry. I have no idea. I'm pretty sure- All I remember is it was this guy narrating his time at this beach, like this island, with some other friends. He's kind of a narcissist, the narrator, and he's- It's crazy and really interesting, and the ending was like, whoa. So, the next book I read- Oh, I gave that one a three star, if I didn't say that. The next book I read was Liar- or listened to is Liar's Beach. I don't know who that's by. Sorry. Um, this one I didn't really like because it was crass and kind of annoying. It was a decent mystery, but I didn't love the whole story. And like the drama wasn't my absolute favorite thing ever. It was just a little strange and I did not like it very much, but it was still good. I'd probably, probably give it to a 2.5 or a 3 star. I feel like 2.5 is mean, but who knows? <laughs> the last audiobook I read, listened to in May is Stardust in Their Veins, and I softy enough that one because I got uninterested. So that is the second book in the Castles in Their Bones series. So yeah. Okay, now on to June. The first book I read was The Thunderhead by Neil Shusterman, second book in the Scythe series. That one was a lot different, but it was also like crazy and really good. And it took me a little bit to get into it because it, I probably just wasn't in the mood for it, but it was really good. I gave that one a 4.5 stars, so about the same as the other one. And the storyline was a lot different and it was a lot like the ending. <sighs> The ending was horrible, <laughs> but I can't talk about it because that's the end of a second book in the series and I just can't talk about it. But that one was really good. It was like crazy and they brought in a new character who I was like, how are they going to tie in? And then they did and now it makes sense. But at the beginning, it's a little bit like, why are they even there? I don't have the book because my friend lent it to me to read, so I don't own it unfortunately. The next book I read in June, second book I read in June, is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson, I think? Maureen? I don't know. I don't know how to say names. So this I've heard is like A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, but also, from my opinion, it gave Wednesday vibes, like Wednesday Addams, the show, because this girl, what's her name? Her name's Stephanie, I think, but it, she goes by Stevie. So Stevie goes to the school that's being completely paid for by the owner because he's a rich millionaire. And no, not a lot of people go there because it's known for a murder that happened like 70 years ago. I'm not actually sure about that, but she, Stevie is obsessed with true crime and like mysteries and murder mysteries and whatever. So she mainly goes because of that. And she really just wants to solve the murder. They caught somebody and he admitted to it, but a lot of people think it wasn't him because the message Truly Devious wrote for them was in English and this guy spoke English as a second language, so they didn't think he'd be able to do it. They didn't think he'd be able to write that. So they, like, they solved the case, but Stevie knows 
that that's wrong and that she wants she's gonna try and find the real murder one warning so this is a series and this first book kind of is set up for the rest of the series so not a whole lot happens the first hundred i think it was halfway through when the first big thing happened but it's mainly just getting to know the characters and the school and what's going on not really focusing on the mystery some big things happen but it's mainly set up for the next book so if you're going into this thinking they're gonna solve the murder sorry that doesn't happen in this book but it was still really good i binged to this i read like a lot of it at a time which was really fun because i was kind of in a reading slump and this was the perfect thing to get me out of my reading slump so it was really good and it's fast paced and it's not too long so yeah that one was really good the next book i read over like three months maybe two probably two is great expectations i also don't have this one with me because allegra took it to camp with her because she's reading it now but this is Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. It's a classic novel and it's about Pip. I think his name is Philip, but he goes by Pip. And it's just kind of his life through maybe 15 years, maybe 10 years. I'm not actually sure, but it's over a certain amount of time where he grows up and he has all these great expectations and he gets sponsored by somebody. He kind of grows up with not a whole lot of money but then he gets sponsored i think that's what it's called he gets a benefactor and he doesn't know who it is and he has all these expectations of who it would be and he becomes a gentleman and all that sort of thing and it was really good i gave that a five star also i never said what i gave truly devious i gave truly devious a four star great expectations on the other hand that one was really good it has older english so it's kind of hard to understand it sometimes i understood the gist of it and there's a movie so if you don't understand it you can watch that it might help a little that one was really good i'm giving it five star because it's just a classic and it has good morals and it was fun to read and charles dickens has really good subtle humor that i love the final two books i read i also partially listened to the audiobook so the last two are Dance of Thieves by Mary E. Pearson and The Perfect Assassin by K.A. Doerr, I think. Who knows if that's how you say it. But these two, I listened to audiobooks and read them partially. Dance of Thieves is a fantasy romance, romantic whatever, and it's heavy on the politics, kind of. It's not heavy. It has a lot of politics and I feel like it's giving Assassin's Blade a little, just a teeny, teeny bit don't get any ideas but this girl's like a really good pickpocket she's a professional thief because she grew up i think without parents and she had to fend for her life and steal and that was the only way she could eat and survive so she's really good and then she gets recruited by the queen to help her do stuff i don't actually know how that came about i feel like they didn't either i missed it or they didn't give a whole lot of backstory or I probably just missed it. So yeah. But this one I've been putting off. But it was actually really good. I wasn't expecting it to be so good. And it really was. It was a pleasant surprise. And I gave this a 4 star. So that's a pretty high rating for me. And I also bought the special edition. So I, had, I knew I had to read it sometime. So that was the second to last book. And this. Uh, the Perfect Assassin. Is a fantasy. I guess. It's about this guy who doesn't want to be an assassin, but it's a family thing and he's training to become an assassin, but he doesn't want to kill people. And they're these assassins, they kill people, but then they have to make sure the body is found within a certain amount of time or else their, their spirit will go free and be evil and stuff. And it's weird and not my favorite. I actually DNF'd this one and it's not a soft DNF. I don't think I'm ever going to pick this up ever again. I'm unfortunately because I thought I would actually enjoy it and it was intriguing I just it wasn't for me the writing style probably just wasn't it I don't know this is probably a really good book I just it wasn't for me so I DNF this I'm not giving it a rating for the audiobooks I've read read listen to I always do that the audiobooks I listened to this month is Dune I finally finished that it took me way too long because it's 21 hours I think and it took me like, not six, probably four, maybe three tries to listen to it all the way through. And I gave that one a four star because that one was actually really good. It's so much better than the, the movies. 
but the, the movies were good but the books are so much better um yeah some of the things that happen in the in the book are just done so much better than in the movies Chani, i'm sorry but what was she doing in the movies but we won't get into that dune is a sci-fi dystopian i'm not sure which um book series there's several books i'm not actually sure how many but yeah the first one is about paul atreides and his father is duke duke he's the duke and there's all the prophecies about i actually have no idea it's super confusing but there's this pro there's a bunch of prophecies about this guy who's gonna save them and yeah that's about it that's all i can say because i have no idea <laughs> it's really confusing but yeah that one was really good i give that four stars definitely would recommend reading it or listening to the audiobook and then watching the movies because all of it together was just fun and then i listened to dance of thieves and the perfect assassin and ferris by gail carson levine levine ferris is a snow white retelling with trolls and other fantasy creatures or like magical creatures whatever and in this world singing and beauty is really highly valued and this girl she can sing really well but she doesn't she's not pretty apparently and she's really insecure about that or whatever because people really want beauty so she doesn't think she's well okay then she doesn't think she's gonna go anywhere in life but then she gets brought to the king to sing in front of him and befriends the queen then the king something happens to the king and then a whole bunch of things happen to the kingdom and i thought it was really well well done i really liked it surprisingly because at the beginning i was really hesitant but i ended up really enjoying this and it was it was fun actually the audiobook experience was a little strange because there was a lot of singing and i listened to it sped up so it sounded a little odd but it was worth it in the end i gave this one a 3.3.5 star because it was interesting and fun probably i would never have actually picked this up normally but i was filming a video for it so that's one way to get you to read something <laughs> and that those three dance of thieves ferris and the perfect assassin were my last books that i read listened to for the month of june those were all the books i read in may and june and the audiobooks of course i hope you enjoyed and i'll see you guys next time cheers